All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Brought to you by LIC. Good morning and happy Monday to you. This is the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 1st of February. It's going to be an important day for corporate India, for the markets and also for all of us. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman will present the government's budget for the next financial year. Economists have already said that it's going to be more challenging than usual this year because of the disruption caused by the pandemic. And the finance minister is going to have to walk a tightrope, so to speak, between stimulating growth and keeping India's fiscal deficit in check. Watch out for all the latest updates and the reactions on BloombergQuinn.com. Now, speaking of the government's finances, over the weekend, the Ministry of Finance has said that the government's goods and services tax collection surged to an all-time high in December as economic activity remained strong even after the festive season. GST revenue for December collected in January this year was close to 1.2 lakh crore. That was 4% higher than the previous month and 8% higher over the same month a year ago. In the other top news, India's COVID-19 cases continued to remain under control with just over 13,000 cases being reported in the 24 hours to 8 a.m. yesterday. The total number of active cases now stands at just around 1,7,000. Meanwhile, more than 37 lakh health workers have been vaccinated so far in the first leg of the vaccination drive that began in India on the 16th of January. Moving on, the budget session of Parliament will consider a new bill to set up a development financial institution for the purpose of funding infrastructure projects across their lifespan. While the details of the bill are not yet available, the session schedule notes that a law will be introduced to set up the National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development as a provider, enabler and catalyst for infrastructure financing and as the principal financial institution and development bank for building and sustaining a supportive ecosystem across the life cycle of infrastructure projects. There will also be another bill in the budget session which considers prohibiting all private cryptocurrencies and provides for an official digital currency to be issued by the Reserve Bank of India. The schedule for the session shows that the cryptocurrency and regulation of official digital currency bill of 2021 is slated for introduction, consideration and passing. With regard to the prohibition of all private cryptocurrencies, certain exceptions are expected to be permitted to promote the underlying technology of cryptocurrency and its users. In other news, Indian mutual funds invested close to 4,000 crore rupees in REITs or real estate investment trusts in 2020. That's a six-fold jump from the previous year and suggests that the instrument is finally finding traction. SkyMet has projected that India should experience a normal monsoon season this year. The private weather forecaster has said that there is sufficient cooling in the Pacific Ocean now and La Nina conditions are at the peak. But the initial readings also indicate that there are still some risks in a few areas. In international markets, U.S. equity futures were indicating a negative start to the week for Wall Street last I checked. And in the Asia-Pacific region, two of the three early rises were trading with gains of around 1%. And with that, it's over to Hormuz Fatakia for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Hormuz. How are we looking today? Good morning to you, Alex, and to those who have tuned in today on Budget Day. The markets will definitely be anticipating a lot from this budget. Firstly, something that will help them snap six days of declines. The last instance of the markets falling for six days in a row before a budget speech was back in February of 2001. Both Sensex and Nifty have had the worst start to the year since 2016, ironically, in a month where they scaled one new record after another. Early takes 
on the SGX Nifty showed that the index traded 60 points lower around the mark of 13,650. Of course, the budget takes precedence today, but there will be stocks that will react to their earnings and specific news flow. First up, ICICI Bank's core income and net profit were ahead of consensus estimates. Deposits saw a growth of 22% over the previous year, while loans worth 8,280 crore rupees were not classified as NPAs as per the Supreme Court order, taking the pro forma gross NPA for the lender to 5.42% from 5.36% in the second quarter of FY21. Out of the total restructured loans, over 800 crore rupees were from retail borrowers. Tata Motors said that the operating income of its passenger vehicles business was the highest in the last 10 quarters. The company also said that as demand situation continues to improve, it is debottlenecking its supply chain and ramping up output in order to address the supply constraints. Antique stock broking has resumed coverage on the stock with a buy rating and a price target of 375 rupees, while MK has rated the stock as a high conviction buy. CIPLA's board has approved the restructuring plan with two of its wholly owned subsidiaries. The subsidization of the India-based operations of the US business will help improve focus on the US business and will enable multiple options to drive expansion in the future, according to the company's statement. The company's revenue and net profit in the December quarter were ahead of consensus estimates and margins too saw an expansion by over 600 basis points. Tech Mahindra reported a 4% growth on a sequential basis for its dollar revenue, while new deal wins stood at $455 million. Margins also saw an expansion of 150 basis points over the previous quarter. UPL has maintained its 6-8% revenue growth and 10-12% EBITDA growth guidance for FY21, even as its operational performance was below street expectations. The subdued operational performance was due to the drag in its Latin America business, which saw a decline of 8% compared to last year, courtesy drought-like situations in Brazil and Argentina. The company expects the growth momentum to be supported by favorable agroeconomic conditions and strong agri-commodity prices. So among other results, IDFC First Bank returned to profitability during the December quarter with a double-digit growth in its core income. This despite the pro forma gross NPA rising to nearly 4.2% from 1.8% last quarter. The lender made additional COVID-19 related provisions worth 390 crore rupees in the third quarter. Credit Access Grameen reported a net loss during the quarter as provisions and write-offs saw a nearly five-fold jump from last year. Pro forma gross NPA was nearly 7% from just over 1.5% while disbursements saw a growth of 54% from last year. DLF saw revenue rise 15% from last year while sales bookings grew 40% to over 1,000 crore rupees. Margins expanded to 32.3% from 17% last year. The real estate player has also managed to reduce its net debt down to 5,100 crore rupees for the quarter ended December. Companies like Castrol, Coromandel International, Kansai Narolak and Mastec among others will be reporting their results today. Aside of earnings, watch for Tata Power as the company has received the letter of intent from the Odisha Electricity Regulatory Commission as the successful bidder to own the license for distribution and retail supply of electricity in Odisha's five circles of Northeastern Electricity Supply Company. The company expects annual revenue of the SPV created for license of the Nesco utility to be in excess of 2,470 crore rupees. The license will be initially valid for a period of 25 years. Lastly, watch for auto stocks today as they will be reporting their sales figures for the month of January. We'll be getting you all the updates from that as well as from the union budget speech right here on BloombergQuint.com. With that, I wish you a safe day ahead and it's back to you, Alex. Thanks, Hormuz. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shila Ditya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy. Brought to you by LIC. LIC.